In this week's parsha and parsha's re'e, <coughs> the Torah after V in Parak Yudalud, Pasuk Gimel, up to Chamishi discusses the kashas of of animals. How do we know for animals kosher and fish and birds? About sixty-five years ago, in the early nineteen fifties, nineteen fifty maybe to be exact, Tovshin Yud. A new issue, a new Shaila arose, a, a new Shaila which, which, nobody spoke about clearly until then. And that is, is it possible that animals, not birds, animals need a Masayur? And this Shaila is very, very, very Nagea. It's 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 something that that has serious implications for for the kosher consumer every single day. So what, let's let's go back to what the issue was. The issue: w- w- which animal do we want to eat? At that point, there was a, there was there was um, there was some sort of a movement to import meat from Madagascar. Madagascar is a is a country off the coast of of um, eastern Africa, and the cows that came from there were from the zebu. Zebu is a is a, um, a zebu is a group of cattle. There's about fifty different kinds of cows. And um, <clears throat> different, slight little variations. Oh, about four of them have a bump on them. This is one of them. This is Ibu. This is a this is a Brahmin cow. It has a big bump, a big bump on the on the back, and has these big floppy ears. So the question is that um, obvi- um, science and nowadays we assume it's part of a, it's a cow, but could it be that it's a different min? It's a new kind. It's a new. It's a new species. And if it's a new species, is it possible that a min needs a needs a a messiah? Here's another picture of a different of a, an, another Brahmin. Again, here's a here's that big bump on the, on its back. Now the question arose. The the chief rabbi at the time was Rav Herzog. Advisor Herzog sent a let a letter to Chazanish about a different issue. He had a different. Um, a different Shaila entirely. Um, he, 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 um, nobody had ever discussed the, the concept that maybe we need a Messiah for animals, and he had a different Shaila which he, which he ultimately decided was not a problem. But the Chazanish said that no, we have a problem of Messiah, and he said um, he wanted to explain, that's how he wants to explain a Shach in Simon Pei in Yerodeya. And um, and so the Chazanish said, no, we can't use it. Rav Herzog d- disagreed, and he ultimately said it was fine. But the Chazanish was very strong, and the Chazanish rallied a lot of Rabbanim at the time, and it was never brought into Eretz Yisrael. However, nowadays, it's much, much more prevalent. Why? Because nowadays, um, a big part of the industry is in South America. And South America is also a very warm climate, just like Madagascar. And the regular, the regular Angus, the regular cows that, 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 that um, originate in, in Europe, are much, uh, have a difficulty um, breathing and, and, and uh, not contracting diseases in the warm climates of um, of South America, so so the zebu is much much is, is is a better is a better species for them to, to raise. However, the zebu is not as tasty as the Angus and and, 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 and the regular European cow. So um, what they've come up with the most popular one is called a Brangus. It's a cross in between the Ang- the Angus and the Brahmin, which is a kind of a zebu. So the brangus looks something like this. Now this cow, this cow doesn't even look different. It has a very very small hump. Cows can have that small little hump. It looks pretty much like a regular, a regular Angus cow. What happened was that um, that even though in Eretz Yisrael many were not, you know, they were they wanted to not use the 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 zebu because of the chazanish. How, but they didn't realize that they were using this brangus, and this brangus you can't tell, but it really has its its ancestry is, is from from a zebu cow. And therefore, if the chazan, if, if you if you're um, if you hold like the chazanish, this would be a problem. So, 
um, do is a movement not to use it. Eventually, it turned out that everything in Eretz Yisrael, all the milk and everything, is coming from 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 this, and um, it seems like most are not makbid on the on the, uh, uh, the most are not makbid on this chazanish. And in Eretz, in America, also there's a lot of cold cooks that come from from South America, from Uruguay and Paraguay, and um, they're all from this brangus. Okay, so what's the issue? What's the what's the shaila? Let's try to let's try to a little bit go through the shaila, and try to understand this this shach. That the chazanish from this chazanish from this shach the chazanish built this halacha that you need a messiah. Okay, so let's first start by birds. Okay, in simon pei bays, there's two halachas, right? Birds. The Torah doesn't give us any simon for kashrus. The Torah doesn't tell us. If it has this and this sim and it's kosher, or this and this sim and it's not kosher. What the Torah does is the Torah gives us 24 birds that are non-kosher. Achazal went and said that those four, from those 24 we could learn what are the simonim that are not kosher. What are the things that if a bird has those four, it's not kosher. It has um, uh, um, uh, a, a zefek, which is, the, which is a, a part inside the with the bird, where it stores its food, it has a certain kind of a gizzard, a certain kind of a zephic, a certain kind of a, a, a korkavan, it has a certain kind of a, um, it has etzbe yisera, which is part of its, part of its, um, uh, its feet. And the fourth thing is that it's not dairis. If it has these four things, you know that you can eat the bird. So you go outside, you see it has those four, it doesn't have those four, so monum, it's fine. That's one way how to tell if a, if a bird is kosher. The other way how to tell a bird, if a bird is kosher is just to go by Messiah. Which means, the Gemara says, the Gemara says, Oif tohar nechel That means you don't have to go check it. If you have if you have a Messiah, if you have some a, a tradition that this is a kosher bird, it's kosher. So there's two ways how to, how to eat a, a bird. If you There's two ways you want to eat a bird. Either you can eat the bird because it doesn't have these four sim on them. Or... Or, if you have a tradition, Eftar Nechel that's the that's the those are the two ways how to how to um how to know that a bird is kosher in that's and it's brought down the Shulchan Aruch Simen Pei Beis. However, Rashi in 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 Chulin tells us he he's talking about a Gemara. The Gemara says that there was a bird that they were eating for many years because they didn't have any of these four three they didn't have any of these four simonim of Toma. And then years later all of a sudden it started to be Tyrus. So Rashi says that since the, this last this four semen is very difficult because Tyrus means is we we're trying to we're trying to decide if this bird is kosher by an action. Not by some sort of a physical attribute that this bird has. You have to see if it doesn't have a certain action, if it doesn't have a certain, if it doesn't act a certain way. And so, since it's not a simon shepherd gufay, it's not a physical thing; it's an action. How? Who's going to go tell? How are you going to know? And you could end up ha- having this this terrible thing that happened that the Gemara says happened that they start that they ate the tarnagot or the agma, and it was um, and and it turned out to be treif. So therefore, Rashi says. From now on, we're not using those four simonim of the Gemara. The four things of the Gemara of of, um, of Zefek and Kukavan and Niklaf and Etzbe Yisera and Enidaris, we don't go by that. All we go by is the other way to know that something is kosher, which is Oif Torah Nechel B'Meseris. That's what Rashi says. And that is, that's brought down in the Ramah, the Mechaber, the Shulchan Aruch himself does not bring that down. In other words, the Shulchan Aruch himself Holds of Rashi to an extent, but not as strong as Rashi as as strong as, strong as the Ramah brings it down. But the Ramah brings it down clearly in, I'm sorry, in in, in the end of 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 Simin, of of um, Sif Gimel Haga Vyesh Aimim Sheinless Moich Afilu Al Zeh. Even on the, on on the, by, by ducks, ain't less much. I feel all that, but ain't lechol shomayf ella b'mesayir shekiblu shuhutar. So those are the, the those are the two simonim. 
the Shulchan, the, the Ramah says that we don't, we're not saying on anything. We're, we only take something that we have Messiah. We only say on that other method of knowing that something's kosher, which is the Messiah. Okay. That's the, that's by birds. Because by birds, there's a very, very serious issue. There's a serious issue that it's very not clear to know what's kosher and what's not kosher. And therefore, now we have a, a, a blanket thing. There's only the birds that have a messiah. Those are the birds that we eat. And any other birds we do not eat. So we have a couple of birds that we eat. The regular ones. And the rest we don't touch. Now what's by animals? By, by animals, meaning behemoths and chayas, the Torah tells us that what the Samanim are. They have to be Malagera and Mephis Parasa. Right, both Malagera is that they're that they that they chew their gut, they chew their cud, and Mafras Parsa is that they have split hooves. These are things that are very, very, very easy to tell and very obvious. However, there's another question by 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 um, the Hamas and Chayis, and that's what the Shulchanor talks about in Simon Pei. Not a question of kashras, not a question of if it's kosher or not, because we know that they're kosher if they have. If they have uh, split hoofs and they chew their cut, they're kosher. If not, they're not kosher. But there's another question. The other question is, is this animal a behema or a chaya? What's the difference if it's a behema or a chaya? So there's two differences. Each A behema has its halacha that's different than a chaya. And a chaya, each one has their own halacha. A behema has a halacha that it's chela v'zasr. Whereas a, by a chaya, chelav is mutter. Chelav of the deer is fine. And and a chaya, like a bird, has a halacha of to be mechaser of blood, kisei adam, a mitzvah of kisei adam. Whereas by behemoth, there's no such halacha. So um, so though, that's that's what the Shulchan Aruch is discussing in Simon Pei. To know how do we know if something so Shukhanoch in Simon Pei um, says that you, that um, um, how do we know if it's kosher? He first says the, the difference in between in between the chelav and the dam, and he says, and how do we know? And there's a whole complicated method to figure out if something's a chayor or a beh- or a chayor or a behema, different kinds of horns, and that's what Simon Pei discusses. And there's some animals that 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 remain a suffix. Here's where the Shach comes in. Shach in Simon Pei, Sif Aleph says like this: I am Pirush shall dvarim elu bebeis Yosef. Go look at the at the explanation for these halachas that are brought down in Shulchan Aruch in the other work of the Mechaber in the Beis Yosef. Ulefisha ein lanu ata, and since we don't have today elamasha kibab shikibal nu bemesayrus, only things that we have a mesayrus a tradition ukil kamon Simon Pei beis, and like we have later on by the birds. Gabi Simoni Oif, Katsati, I I cut it short, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna elaborate on these halachas. That's what the Shach says. Now the simple reading might might um might uh, might one might think that the Shach it means to say that there's some sort of a halacha, like by the birds, that we don't touch any animals without a Messiah, without a tradition. Which is how the Primagodim understood it initially. And he says, the Yesh Liris. How could that be? Because over there, there's, a, there's something to worry about. There's something to worry about. There's something to worry about because of the time of go to the Agma. Because they didn't know. It's a simon that's not Shabagufa. It's a simon that we, 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 might, we might not, not know about. It's 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 some kind of an attribute. It's it, it's a characteristic in the animal that cannot be told. You can't know for sure that it's that it's that it's not kosher, and therefore, and therefore we 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 accepted to not eat without a messiah. However, over here, what are you worried about? The the prim garden brings a different shot, a different reason why we should only be makbed on a messiah by birds, because the whole concept of doiris, there's a lot of different sheetas in the Rishon, a lot of different explanations in the Rishon, and what, what is the definition of, of doiris? There's like three or four different shot. So, he says, oh, by, by birds, it's difficult to, to know by, 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 by birds. However, by, by, by chayas,
He says, Ubehemavadi and Bikias la Hakim Mafresis Parasa Malagera. He says, There's no, you don't need some sort of a, uh, some some kind of a, uh, there's no major Bikias. You don't have to be a, 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 a a specialist to know how to know to know the difference of if to know if it's Malagir or Mafras Paris. So these things are very uh, obvious and easy to, to discern. So the Prima Godim explains the the Shach that the Shach is not the El Dehiu Nam Kamar that of course the Shach um doesn't mean that it, we don't eat it at all. He means to say that if we ever have a Shaila, if we ever have a question about some kind of an animal. If it's a chay or a bird, we just machmer. We just, we just, we just assume that it might be a chaya and a behema, and therefore we go the chumrah. So that's why there's no reason for simon pay because simon pay is differentiating in between a chay and a behema. We, 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 uh, the way we do it is that we, um, we just, we just, we go the chumrah and we're machbid. On the chumrah of a chaya and a behemah, meaning that every such an animal that falls in this suffix, we just we do cover the blood, and we don't we refrain from eating its chayv. That's what the shach, how the shach explains the. That's how the prim Godim explains the shach. And that's how things were. Nobody nobody explained the shach any other way. At least clearly, there is a chachmas adam that maybe um, that that the chachmas adam may, may, might have might have alluded to such a such an explanation, but um, but in, in clearly nobody nobody discussed clearly that uh, that there would be a problem of eating uh, eating um, eating a chaya or behemoth that doesn't have a masayir because we know that it's malagir and mafras pars, but. When Rav Herzog sent sent the Chazanish that question, which was obviously was which was a question about something totally to, totally different, it was, he was worried about a different issue. The Chazanish says no. He says the Prim Godim got it wrong. The Prim Godim's explanation is that we're discussing about some kind of a some kind of a um um that 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 the way we do it is that we just refrain from Chelav and Dam. He says. There were no animals coming to Europe that, that they had the Suffolk, new kinds of animals. So, he says it's very unlikely that that's what the Shach meant. And of course the Shach meant that there was a Kabbalah not to eat Chayis and Behemoth at, 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 without a Messiah. What's the reason for it? That's it. If you have a if you have a Kabbalah on a Chayis or Behemoth, that is, if you have a Messiah, that's fine. If you don't have a Masera, we don't touch the animal. And therefore, a zebu would be us. Awesome. What's the problem? So the Chazanish discussed it. The Hakali says, Misho Migde Milsa. He says, it, we're, we're, we're erecting a gate. Then it's might while Vavis, our hearts are small. It's easy for us to just stay in the old path. And also the gun in the Kabul um Khadoshim, if we're gonna have new things in the Stabak Bedin Khelbam Vikisi Damim, it's gonna get complicated. Yeah, Khalev no Khalev Kisi Adam, we don't know. Vitoyer Evrim Lefi Linya Trefus, we're also gonna have a problem of different different um different criteria for Trefus. The Ain Alain Lukapa Satamis Ataim. And at the end he says, and we don't have to look for reasons. If this is what it was, this is what it was, and it's Asr and finished. And that's what the, that's what the Chazanish, that's how the Chazanish left it. And again, we said that um, at that time, they um, the meat was not brought in from Madagascar, but nowadays um, there's plenty of meat that comes in from South America, which is also a very warm climate. And over there, it's the the beef, the the, the Brahmin cow, and um, and that uh, that uh, we're, we're not Macbeth on. It's also in the gear for the beefalo. Beefalo is a cross in between a a, um, um, a a cow and a buffalo, which is supposed to be very healthy. It's low in cholesterol. It's also something that would be come into this thing because this beefalo is this buffalo that that they crossed with the cow is um, it's not the buffalo that that Chazal knew about. It's a it's 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 
it's a it's an American species. I just wanna just wanna say a different shot in this shach, and if we say this shot in the shach, maybe we will um we won't have the the, the, the cash of why what's the what's 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 wrong with this animal. And I think maybe in the Loshan of the Shach it'll be better. Could it be that the Shach is not talking, is not discussing the problem of Messiah? In other words, we, we explain that Messiah could refer to a Kula or a Chumra. The truth is that Messiah in the Gemara is a Kula, right? We said, how do you know if you eat a bird? If a bird is kosher, either you have to check its force if it has the if it doesn't have the force on him, or you go by Messiah by tradition. So those were the two heterin. Those are the two ways that we know if something is kosher or not. Then it turned out that Rashi told us that we should stop using the other method, the force on him, and we were stuck with only the other method of kashus of Messiah. But Messiah is really a heter. It's a way that we know that something is kosher. And it's a big kula. Because how do I know this is kosher? The the Territ says, I could trust somebody. I could trust the the tradition. That's what Messiah really is. One could also refer to our Chumrah, that we don't eat anything else besides with the Messiah as Messiah. But... But Messiah could, 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 when somebody, when the Shach discusses Messiah, he could be talking about a Kula, about the Heter. Now let's look at the Shach. The Shach says like this, I am Peter Sheldvarim, yeah, there's a, he's, he's about to discuss the difference between cows and, and cows and, and, um, um, Chayis and Behemus. Benegea, to know if it's, if the, the, the Halach of the Chayel is the Halach of the Dam. He says, I am Peter Shaldvar Melbim Bebeis Go look at the Beis Yosef, see what he has to say. Go look over there. He doesn't say, don't look. Don't say, he doesn't say it's not like it. He says, no. Ulafisha ain't lanuata. Since we don't have today, Ella Masha ki bound up in Messiris, Ukil Kaman Besim and Pei Beis, Katsati. Could it mean that the Shach means like this? This halachis of to, of these, these, of the horns to know if something is a chay and a behema are only relevant if I don't have a different way of knowing. But I have a different kula. I have a different way of knowing if something is a behema or a chay. How? I have the kula of Messiris. And the kula of Messiris tells me that I don't have to know, I don't have to know, um, I don't have to be able to. to uh, figure it out on my own. As long as I have a tradition that this is kosher, or that this is a behemoth or a chaya, I could go with that. So the Rishach is saying, since here in Europe, the Fisha in Lanuata, it's before America, or at least he, he, he wasn't dealing with, 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 with cows from Madagascar, or cows in South America, or beefalo. Only animals that we have our, that we already have a tradition, if they're behemoths or chayis, I, I cut it short, and I'm not going to be myrach. It would be better, that's why the shach talks about he's talking about the, the Shulchan Aruch. he's not discussing what the Ramah brought down the, the Chumrah of Rashi if that would be the Pshat and the Shach then we also would not have a problem of, 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 of um, uh, not eating our our, uh, our beefalo and our um, our brangus because the Shach was never discussing some new concept, some new halacha, some new kabbalah that, that we shouldn't eat. We shouldn't eat something that we don't have a tradition of eating. The, the, the truth is that a behemoth, a chaya, if it's, if it's, if it's malagir or mafras parsa, it's very obvious, readily obvious. The question over here is only, um, um, the question was, 
to be able to differentiate, to know if something's a behem or a chaya, for that the shach says, of course you could go with the Shulchan Aruch. I'm not introducing any new laws here. Of course you could go with the Shulchan Aruch. And, the, and the Shulchan Aruch gives complicated different different criteria in the, in the horns to know if it's a, if it's a behem or a chaya. Fine. I am very serious. But I am not going to spend time with it because here in Europe, where I am, Zakta Shach, it wasn't so relevant because they all the animals that 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 they were dealing with they already had a clear tradition if it's a behemoth or a chai.